The DJI Pocket 3 is a phenomenal camera for recording your family life and everyday life. Uh, it is just such a nice little camera. It's got such good image quality. Uh, it's so easy to use. And I mean, the size of it, like we all know that great things come in little packages, right? So what's the best way to get great image quality and still allow this thing to be easy to use? Well, to me, the best thing is that I can just flip it open and start recording. I don't have to worry about my settings. I don't have to worry about lighting and all that stuff because I've already set this up to just work the way I want it to work. And so today I'm going to walk you through all my settings, all the things that I've changed in the menu system um, so that this is an easy to use camera. I can just focus on having fun with it and filming my family. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Zach. I am a photographer and videographer, but more important than that, I am a husband and a father. And can you tell that I'm actually in a new space? This around me, this background, it looks very similar to my previous background, intentionally so, but I'm actually in a new office. Let me show you real quick. I'll give you a quick uh, early preview of this. I have renovated my garage to become my new office studio. Uh, and there's still some work to do. We still got some stuff to do here. Um, but that video is coming of a tour of the office. Uh, but this is the first time I'm actually filming a full video in this space. So I'm excited. Anyways, that's not the point of today's video. Today's video is to talk about settings for the DJI Pocket 3. Now, I love this camera because it has such great image quality and it's so easy to use. And part of that is because the settings are just so easy. I've set the settings up uh, in such a way that all I have to do is flip this camera open and start recording. Um, and I love that. For someone who wants to have a camera that is very easy to use, you don't have to think about it, you don't have to worry about it, that's what I have set my settings up to be. And so that's what I'm gonna walk you through today uh, to get ease of use and the best image quality that you can out of this camera. So if you're new to the DJI Pocket 3, I'm gonna start by walking you through the menu system and I'll tell you the things that I have changed on my camera. Um, starting off with, we'll scroll down from the top and the first thing I'm gonna go to is the second on the top button. This is the screen rotate and capture. Now, I originally had this set up so that as soon as I flipped the screen open, it would start recording um, and I honestly didn't like it. There were so many times where I flipped it open and I wasn't wanting to record. And so then you would get these little short videos that I just always forgot to delete. So I personally didn't like that. Um, so I have that turned off. Now, if you do like that idea of just flip it open, you don't even have to press record, then just change this little button here and that will do that for you. Uh, you also see here, I have three custom profiles. Um, I'll get into that a little bit more. Um, I do have it set up so that when I flip the screen open, um, it resorts to the last setting I've been on. So if I'm in video mode, it'll resort to that. If I'm in a custom video mode, it'll resort to that. If I had switched over to photos and I closed it out, like when I flip it open, it'll switch back to photos. Moving on to the next thing uh, is just your brightness. Personally, I keep my brightness at 100%. Do what you want. And then you've got selfie mode on and off. So basically what this does is if you have your camera um, in the selfie mode, it's automatically going to track your face. Now, I sometimes use this and I sometimes don't use this. I think when you're using the selfie mode like this, it's nice. Like it is nice if I move it around, like I know that it's just going to track me, but I, I'm still someone who just kind of likes that manually. But I think if you're going to be using this and you want ease of use, I think that's a good setting to turn on. So now we're gonna go to the bottom left. Um, and this is where a lot of the settings are. So um, I'm gonna skip past wireless mic. We'll come back to that later. Um, gimbal startup direction. I have this set to my last setting. So if I turn the camera off and the gimbal is facing me, when I turn it on, it's gonna be facing me. Um, I found that that's just been useful. Sometimes it's annoying, but for the most part, it's been useful. Um, rotate screen power to off, two seconds. Haven't changed any of that. Um, the joystick speed, I have changed that a little bit. I've got my zoom at four. Um, and my gimbal speed at four. So that just means when I'm zooming in and out, the speed at which it's zooming is it's level four. And then also the, the gimbal motion is at a level four as well. If you do want a little bit of a faster or slower um, on that, you can go all the way up to seven with zoom. 
Um, and oh, can I get that back? There we go. And seven with your gimbal. Or if you want slower, then you can obviously drop that down as well. Um, I like to keep mine in the middle at four. Um, I have turned off the sounds on this because I don't want people to hear it when I turn it on and stuff like that. I like it to be a little bit more covert. That's pretty much all the settings in here that I've changed. Okay, so your next option is your screen orientation. So uh, you've got three options. You can do uh, where it auto rotates, you can do landscape, or you can do portrait. So for me, I like it on auto rotate. Basically that means that if I flip the screen close and hit continue, it's going to continue recording in vertical mode. Um, if I flip it open, it's going to go into horizontal mode. And then your next one is your speed for the gimbal. So I have mine at default. Um, if you are catching a subject that is moving a little bit faster, it'd be good to switch this over. Um, I don't really use the slow. I feel like it's too slow for me. So I haven't really messed with that. Um, and then my gimbal mode, I have it in follow. You can also go into tilt mode um, and FPV, which FPV, like it, you know, if you've ever seen FPV vi drone videos, like you get that, like it's kind of like a, I mean, I don't know how to describe it, but it, it, to me, it throws me off. That's not necessarily what I want this camera to look like. So I use mine in follow mode because that to me feels like the most natural. So, you know, it's basically just going to follow the motions of my hand. Um, and I like this. I like that this feels like an extension of my hand. Okay, so now I'll show you how to set up your frame rate and your resolution. So swipe up from the bottom and you'll see here that you have an option of 1080p, 2.7K and 4K. Um, most of the time I keep mine at 2.7K. I don't feel like I need 4K. Um, and then I keep my frame rate at 24 frames per second. That's because for me, most of the time, the things that I'm filming on this, I'm not intending to slow down at all. If I do want to slow my footage down, then I would change it over to 60 frames per second. But for the most part, I'm filming in 24 frames per second. You also have an aspect ratio up here, um, which is one to one or 16 by nine. I keep mine in 16 by nine. If I swipe from the left, you have all of your pro options. So exposure, white balance, um, glamour mode, which basically softens the skin a little bit, just makes you look a little bit prettier. Um, you've got your color settings, um, your focus mode, and then you also have some custom options here. Um, now, I have brought the sharpness down 2% um, because I think that uh, you can adjust sharpness in post. If you want to make your image sharper in post, you can do that. You can't necessarily make it less sharp in post. So I've brought the sharpness down. Same with the noise reduction um, and just confirm that. So now here is the most crucial thing that I have found is that I've actually set up three custom modes so that this camera is super quick and easy to use in most scenarios. So to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to set your settings the way you want. So let's say you want your camera to be uh, 2.7K, 24 frames per second. We've already got that set here, right? Now let's go into our pro settings. Let's say we want our exposure to be auto. So let's change that. Um, I want my EV to be around zero. Maybe I want it to be a, just a tiny bit brighter. Um, and then you can also set your ISO. You can set what range you want your ISO to be. So maybe you don't wanna go above 800 ISO. Maybe you don't wanna go above 400 ISO. Um, I think I've got mine set to 1600, maybe 32. Personally, I don't care if the ISO goes really high because to me, I'm using this most of the time as a family camera. So I want the best image quality, but I'd rather have it still be uh, bright enough to see and have it a little bit more noisy. So let's confirm that. Auto white balance, you can either set to manual or auto. I set mine to auto, let the camera do the work on that. Color, you can work in normal color, um, which means it's gonna look good right out of the camera. Um, HGL or D-Log. Now I use D-Log because I like to edit my footage after the fact and put on my own custom profiles. Um, and then, like I've said, your focus mode, I like continuous, and then I've already showed you my custom. So once I have it set the way I want it, I can scroll up from the top, hit the top button here, and I can save to a custom feature, custom setting. So I will show you my three custom settings that I have and why I use them in different scenarios. So to start, you're gonna go to the bottom left, you're gonna go to your shooting modes, 
and I'm gonna scroll all the way to the left for my first one. Now, my first one is uh, shot in 2.7K at 24 frames a second because most of the time in this mode, I'm shooting my family. I'm shooting everyday life. This is my family video camera. And so I don't need 4K. I don't need 60 frames per second because I don't need to slow anything down. And then if I swipe over, you'll see that my exposure is auto. I do have it set for the ISO to be 500 to 3200. And I like my EV to sit right at zero. Auto white balance is what I've selected. I do have glamour effects on because why the heck not? Uh, my color is D-Log, and then I've already showed you continuous focusing and then the same uh, custom, oh, that one's not changed. I should adjust that. Typically, sharpness is negative two and noise reduction is negative two. Let's just adjust that real quick. There we go. That's my first custom setting mode. This is what I'm using most of the time when I'm just filming family. Now, if I want to do uh, a little bit of more professional stuff with it, I do use this camera when I'm you know, filming a wedding. Um, I'll pull it out during the dances or if I need an extra angle. So in that sense, I do have this set to 4K 60 frames per second because there is a chance that I may slow this footage down. And then if I go over into these settings, I have my exposure set to manual because I'm shooting a wedding. I want to make sure my shutter speed is at 120. I want to make sure my shutter speed is double my frame rate. Um, and then I can kind of adjust it from there. Auto white balance still because that's one less thing I need to worry about. Uh, glamour is on again because why not? D log, continuous, and the same custom settings. And then the last profile I have is actually my wife's profile. So sometimes she will use this camera. Uh, to film some of her videos and so pretty much in this way I'm wanting this to be an everyday vlog camera with a few tweaks from my settings so we're at 2.7k but we are at 60 frames per second because sometimes she likes to be able to slow stuff down so we've got that set and then into my other settings auto exposure uh, same EV same ISO auto white balance glamour effect on and then my color is actually normal because my wife does not like working with uh, log footage. Um, so there is a nice ability to adapt and change this camera for whatever you want. So let's turn this off real quick. Let's say my wife has been using this camera. Um, she's been filming a vlog on it. What's so nice is that if I'm now ready to film family stuff, all I gotta do, flip it open. I have to press one button, select my setting, and I'm good to start recording. That's how easy it is. Um, there's not much to it. It's so nice to just kind of set your settings to auto on this camera, change a few things, and then just let the camera do a lot of the work. There's tons of people out there who will talk to you about cinematic style of shooting on this camera, all the different ways you can set it up for cinematic settings. I don't care. Like I'm using this camera in most scenarios as an everyday video camera for my family. Like, yes, I'll use it at weddings from time to time, but for the most part, this is an everyday video camera. And so these are the settings that work for me. Hopefully that has kind of helped you get an idea of what settings you may want to use um, and how you can use the custom settings, custom profiles to kind of make it even easier for yourself. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do like and subscribe. Uh, I would love to have you stick around, see the next couple of videos we have coming out. I'm excited about some of the videos coming up. Um, so yeah, hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you next time.